Bionic Leg Tutorial. This armor matches my Bionic armor line and will now complete the set. This is my first set I've completed actually. And now there's a leg to go with it. And here it is. Um, I had to redesign this a couple of times actually because the mechanics of a leg are a little bit more complicated than I thought they would be. So to allow for movement you have to take a lot of things into consideration when building a template. So um, this is what I came up with. I think it looks pretty cool. Matches the set. And uh, you guys have been asking for this for a very long time. So I finally got it done. So I hope you enjoy this. Grab your hammers and let's get started. Get the template to build this yourself by clicking the link under the video or the icon in the upper right hand corner of the video. Or go directly to armortemplates.com where all of my templates are available. I'm now on Patreon. If you'd like to help support this channel and get cool rewards like discount coupons, free templates, and more, click the Patreon link under the video. And thank you! I got these boots from Walmart for about 30 bucks. They are like $70 on Amazon for some reason. Anyway, they're pretty good quality for what I, uh, what we're gonna use it for anyhow. I was pretty impressed with them actually. Um, any boot will work though. Um, this is the main piece for the for the boot. This is the heel that I am curving right now. This will wrap around the back of the boot. And I'm just rounding it on a piece of exhaust pipe. And fitting it against the boot. And as you can see there's some gaps and stuff so I'm going to have to twist and bend until it gets a little bit closer to the right shape. And your hands will do a lot of this work but sometimes you have to use a hammer or something to kind of whack it into submission. That's much better. Looks good. And this side needs a little bit more work, but it's getting there. This is the piece that goes on the top of the foot. I'm using a seamer tool. If you don't have a seamer tool, you can use this uh, same method uh, and do it in your vise, in your bench vise. And I'm just bending it against the flat surface to make it uh, the right shape. Pretty easy. The knee is made in the same way, which you'll see later on. There you go, nice straight line. This is the piece uh, that goes on top of the toe here. As you can see, I'm fitting it across the, the boot there in the background and just kind of giving it, trying to give it the same curve to make it fit as close as I can to the boot itself. And using a hammer, rawhide, mallet actually, to finalize those bends at the ends. This is the toe piece that goes under that and I'm basically just rounding this like I did the other parts. And with some fitting and shaping you'll finally get it in position and you can see they fit pretty good. Now you know you can bend these little tabs over and you can Put the piece on top of there and mark your holes at this point. Uh, rivet it all together and as you can see you can uh, hit it with a rawhide mallet to kind of get rid of this little gap here. A little bit more work and it'll be gone. This is a teardrop hammer I got from my sister for my birthday. Um, this piece here is actually not in the template. Mine, I, I, I cut out a bigger piece than I needed because I'm going to be using an English wheel. Um, so your pieces will actually be smaller than this. I didn't want to get my thumbs caught in an English wheel using too small of a piece. But if you don't have an English wheel, you uh, should have a flat hammer. And you can do your planishing like this. And it actually doesn't take that long to do, so. But I have an English wheel, so I'm going to use it. And now we have a perfect surface. And I'm going to use the template piece and trace out this uh, circle here and pop my holes. And I actually have two pieces here that have the same curvature and they fit on top of each other. And I'm going to rivet these uh, pieces together with these holes. So, and then I'm going to cut these lines in the center too. And you'll see what it makes in a second here. So now I've got it riveted together and then cut to shape. Then I drill the rivets back out. And then once those pieces are cut, it looks like one of those 
you know, socket pieces on a robot or something. So now here's where I'm uh, putting the rivets into the boot. Um, you don't have to put them there. You put them wherever you want, wherever you think is appropriate. Um, just make sure that they're not in your way when your uh, when your foot is in there. Um, and I'm using roofing nails right now. Um, but this proved to be a little bit of an issue because, um, as you'll see in a second, I, you can cut these pieces off. And this is what I, I typically do for mounting armor to leather or something like that. Uh, roofing nails are great. But you have to put something inside of there. This is a, a dolly, just a chunk of metal actually. Um, and you have to put this on the back of the nail to rivet it down. It didn't work so well, so I'll explain in a second how I use different sorts of rivets. This piece here is uh, the piece we made that goes on top of the foot here, and it's getting riveted on the sides. The other piece that we made now gets fitted onto the boot. As you can see, it's only got four rivets in it, not all eight. And I'm going to use pop rivets. Now you would think that these pop rivets would pop through and hurt you while you were walking, but it cinches into the fabric and it actually doesn't touch you at all. Now, typically I would just make my own little things like this and that's not the way to do it. I decided to buy some of these little washers. Um, they're 1 8 uh, interior hole washers and they were like $9, $9 for a hundred. It's ridiculous. I can make them myself, I just realized with my hole punch for free. So uh, it was just this easy to make these things. Just uh, use the bigger die, pop them out, and use a small die in the center. Perfect. And it's free. Anyway, back to work. Um, here I'm fitting the rest of the pieces onto the boot. And as you can see, I've got these holes riveted, but not at the, not at the front. There's no holes at the front. And that is because this is the other side here too. That's because these pieces will have to allow me to uh, uh, use them uh, to clamp it together. This is a, uh, some cheap buckles that I bought, uh, actually the whole belt that I bought. And as you can see, I've cut off part of it so that it's flatter and can lay against the surface. And I've bent over that piece a little bit just to make it conform a little bit better to the pieces that I've already curved. And I've cut out these little squares to allow for these little bumps to lay down into the surface better. And then I riveted, on, riveted it on. Well, that's hard to say. Riveted it on. I'm marking where the rest of the rivets go and putting all these pieces together. Now for, for the other side, I just have uh, part of the belt cut off and riveted onto the other side. And as you can see, it opens up. Since you can't use laces anymore to tighten it up, you have to use something like this. Now moving on to the shin, I'm just kind of marking the straight line I need to make and I'm just uh, rounding off um, just like I did the other pieces on a piece of exhaust pipe. And this actually you can get creative with it. You don't have to have it shaped exactly like I did. You can, uh, you know, make it look like bone or extra muscles or anything you want there. Um, you know, the sky's the limit. This is uh, one half of the calf um, for the back. And this, these, these pieces are probably the hardest pieces uh, to make because they require quite a bit of dishing, as you can see here. I had to return to the dishing stump a couple of times to get, in, get it deep enough. And again, you can use a flat hammer to get rid of these ugly bumps. But I have a dish, or an English wheel, excuse me, and I'm going to be using it. Um, now you can see these parts. Uh, this takes a lot of work to get these couple of parts back here to fit together properly. So it was, uh, it was uh, too wide and not long and narrow enough like it should be, like a muscle would be. So I'm just bending it against the bench here and pushing down on it until it sort of conforms to a little bit better shape. A little bit more like a calf would be. Now, the tops, uh, they, they were bent inward when you put it up against the rest of the, of the boot there. So I had to flare the tops out in order to match the shin pieces. And you're going to uh, find you're going to have to do stuff like this here and there to get the pieces to line up properly. 
depending on how you've built them. Now, uh, I don't have a straight line in the back anymore, so I marked a straight line and then cut those pieces off straight. Now, this piece here is the knee piece, and I've got the two shin pieces put together and uh, taped together, and I've marked a line here. This is the line that I marked. This is the line that we're going to cut, um, and this will change depending on how tall you are, so um, that's why that is not marked in the template. The knee piece uh, was made the same way as the piece that goes on top of the foot, but the difference is uh, we're going to round the edges some, and we're going to round uh, the edges here so that it blends into the rest of the uh, shins better because there's no pointy spot right there. These pieces are made the same way the little piece that went on the, on the boot uh, are made, and these pieces will go together and they will make the knee piece, which you will see in a second. Um, now I'm popping holes. Um, I'm trying to keep my holes pretty uniform on both sides where everything matches up together. Now I've got the two shin pieces kind of mocked up together and, and buckled together here so I can determine where to put these holes in the boot. Now this is the knee piece I was telling you about. This is a strip of leather with some buckles, little plastic buckles, and it's riveted across this piece of leather. And these rivets are kind of hammered down so they're very flat, so they don't touch your skin. And then the center piece will go on the underside like this, and this piece of leather gets riveted on in the center there. And as you can see, it's sort of a standalone piece at the moment, and it allows for movement. Now I'm marking um, a big piece of leather for the holes, which we're going to start putting all these pieces together for the shin and the calf. So start on one side and then work what you wear around. Um, the, this part in the center here will have to go on last. There'll be a gap in between the two pieces of, uh, two calf pieces and that piece can, that gap can be smaller or larger depending on how small or large you are. Now the knee piece is riveted to a piece of leather that is connected to all that, but only on one side obviously, so you can still open it up and get your leg in it. And here these last couple of rivets will complete the build. And there you go guys. Um, this thing was a lot of fun to build. Um, as you can see it really matches the rest of the Bionic Armor line. Um, and now this completes that line, so we're all done with Bionic Armor now. On to bigger and better things. I know you guys have been asking for a bionic leg for a very long time now, so hopefully you're all happy and content. I know I am. And if you like this build, make sure to check out all my other builds. I build all kinds of cool stuff on this channel, mostly in metal, sometimes hot roddy you know, stuff like that, but mostly metal work. So if you like that kind of stuff, make sure to check out my other videos. Part of the knees. Find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash armor templates. Give the page a like and make sure to keep in contact with me there and also other armorers. And make sure to find me on armortemplates.com where all of my templates are available. Gold Knight level patrons on Patreon get their name in my credits, so thank you, Xander Marriott and Louis Montserrat. Anyway, guys, hope you had a lot of fun. I know I did. Don't forget I got new merchandise available at the website. You can also find that stuff under the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Time. Time.